Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, and today I'm going to be going through my aerial car control slash air roll tutorial. Now, you guys have been asking me every single day over on stream to get this tutorial out to you guys, but before I get into the training routine, there's a couple prerequisites we have to go through first. Number one, make sure you're not using default bindings. Rocket League seriously has some of the worst default settings of any game I've ever played. Just go watch this video I did over the best controller settings in Rocket League. It's going to save you a lot of headaches. Secondly, go watch my fast aerial tutorial. It's a super simple mechanic and it's going to pay off in a big way because it doesn't matter how good your car control is if you're constantly getting beat to the ball. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, we're going to move on to how to train, specifically with emphasis points because it keeps me organized. Just a little disclaimer here, this is going to be the boring part of the video, but if you skip past it, you're going to be stuck in gold one for the rest of your life and your friends will make fun of you. So just power through it. So the first point, accept the time commitment. Learning aerial car control is, it's just going to be boring. You have to put in the time to get good. And you're not going to get it all done in one day. It's just not possible. And it's going to suck that you're constantly failing all the time. So here's how you make sure you correctly do this. So just crank on your favorite playlist or podcast, do this routine for an hour or so. And when you start to feel your mind slipping, just remember where you left off, know that you will come back there another day and move on to our second emphasis point. Follow up with aerial shots. I always try to emphasize that learning car control does you absolutely no good if you can't actively apply it to hitting the ball and net because that's kind of the whole point of the game so at the end of every single training session for the day load up your favorite aerial shots pack i prefer aerial shots passed by paquito or self-set backboard consistency for double touches and just apply some of what you learned today to hitting the ball into the net aerial shots pass has a lot of very slow pass plays in there that give you ample amount of time to air roll before you hit the ball what this does is it allows you to take all that juicy muscle memory you just learned in training and apply it to where it really matters. And if you do this, I promise you're gonna see results almost immediately and it'll feel good, but that doesn't mean you're done. And our third emphasis point, don't stop midway through your training. Now that doesn't mean you have to do it all in one day. In fact, I already talked about this, but what it means is if you haven't mastered every step of this video, you're not done yet. Don't allow yourself to think, oh, my car control is good enough. Now I don't need to finish it because I can hit a ball. You're gonna have major blind spots in your car control, also known in the Rocket League community as blackout moments. Those are those moments when you're in the air trying to make a play on the ball, but your brain just can't seem to tell your hands what to do. And it happens for a reason. It's because you didn't listen to my advice, you forehead. You simply have haven't learned how to move your car in that direction yet. And how do I know this? Because I made the same mistakes. I thought my car control was just good enough. And at times it was good enough and I looked really good in game. And then at other times, because I didn't complete my training, I would run into blackout moments and it, it didn't end well, especially in clutch situations. And yeah, I was hard stuck diamond three for a really long time. So don't make my mistake be clutch. Our fourth emphasis point for how to train is to subscribe to the channel. If you look at these analytics here, 94% of my audience isn't subscribed. That hurts. I just found that out like last week. It's so depressing. You guys like Rocket League, otherwise you wouldn't be watching the video. So just go ahead and join the 6% of the audience that absolutely carries my channel. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, this map has been used in a few other tutorials around and there's a reason for that. Pillars is the best map that everyone can use to get better car control. No workshop maps needed. And I mean that. You can learn everything you need about car control here in Pillars Free Play. Starting off, we have the easy run. Figure eights with no restrictions. Just fly around the map in a figure eight in whatever way you possibly can. You can air roll whenever you want. You can do whatever you want with your camera. If you can do three of these in a row without touching the walls, ceiling, or ground, you're free to move on. Next up, we have figure eights, no air roll. Must use ball cam. Yep, you heard that right. You're not allowed to use air roll. But, but, but Tryhouse, I thought this was about learning how to air roll. Listen, believe it or not, air rolling isn't the be all and end all of car control. There are situations in which it's better to simply not air roll. And if you don't train this, you're not going to have that experience. And in game, you're going to experience those blackout moments we were talking about earlier. Now, this is going to be really difficult to do at first. And you're going to run into a lot of those blackout moments. And that is a really good thing, believe it or not, because you're running into those here in free play and not in game. The main thing this is going to help with is keeping you from inverting your controls when your car is upside down or sideways. It's a very common habit in game when you're first learning aerial car control to push left on your analog stick, because from your perspective, it looks like you should still be able to push left and your car will move left. But the controls for the car are always from the driver's seat perspective. So when you're upside down, left is right, up is down, etc. And I've tried several ways to visualize this for myself to help my brain communicate to my hands. But really what this all comes down to is practice and muscle memory. Now when my car is upside down in game, my brain and my hands just instinctively know that the controls are inverted. And I only got there from constantly attempting to get better at it in drills like this. But if you guys have visualizations that you have found help, by all means, leave them down below in the comments and help out some other 
other people. And then once you've got the hang of this, for added difficulty, you can always try reversing direction spontaneously throughout the figure eight, because for some reason, that really throws off whatever plan you had made for yourself and keeps you on your toes. And additionally, you can always try to go through the figure eights faster and faster. Next up, we have figure eights, no air roll, must not use ball cam. Basically, this is the same thing, but without ball cam, your camera perspective can get you into some pretty weird angles that are difficult to navigate around. So it's good to give it a quick run through to try to iron out all those extra blackout moments that it provides. As with the above drill, reverse direction spontaneously in the figure eight for increased challenge or try to do it faster. Next, we have figure eights must hold air roll, and it doesn't matter what camera perspective you use to get through it. Just use either flip flop them. I don't care. Now, when I say you must hold air roll, that doesn't mean you have to be air rolling the entire time like a freestyler. You simply just have to have the button held down. Now, this isn't going to seem very game sense practical, but I promise you this limitation will lead you to becoming an air rolling legend. Powering through this hurdle, you're going to learn a couple things just naturally. First is that even though you've got the air roll button held, you can still control the pitch of your car up and down. And two, and probably one of the more important things in this tutorial, you're going to learn the cuxer twist. This is one of the basic building blocks for good aerial car control and freestyling. The way you execute this is by holding air roll and then pushing your analog stick diagonally down left or down right, depending on the direction you want to twist. If you're an air roll right and left user, you just push down on your stick instead of diagonally. Now, there are several benefits to mastering the cuxer twist, but the first and most immediate one is so you can pass this part of the tutorial. It's going to be one of the easiest way for you to change your momentum from side to side. Because of the twist, you're constantly rotating the axis of your car. So if you do it wide enough, you can quickly shift which way your boost is facing and counter your momentum for a turn. And that is the easiest way to complete this stage, is simply to set yourself up for a wide cuxer twist around the corners and then just do a bunch of smaller twists through the curves. Now, as you get more comfortable, you can start adding more and more air rolls in between the turns and you'll start to figure out instinctively how to move while holding air roll. You can always change direction spontaneously for more challenge, go through them faster, or constantly be air rolling. Next up, we have figure eights must hold air roll, but opposite direction. And it doesn't matter your camera perspective or anything again. Now I say must hold opposite direction. I don't mean you constantly have to be air rolling the other direction or use directional air roll. What I mean is if you're anything like me, you have a favorite side and what you air roll. For me, I pretty much always air roll left if I'm going to air roll. For example, I found out about a month or so ago, I pretty much never air roll right. If I was going up for a ball in game, I would always start by air rolling left. And some fast reaction plays actually called for me to air roll right. So I would completely miss out my chance on the ball. So basically what I'm saying is you have to practice both directions or you will be stuck in diamond three forever. Guys, I basically had to pay rent. I was in diamond three so long. It's a terrible place. So yeah, it's not that you have to air roll the opposite direction the entire time, but it's just, if you have been favoring one direction, make sure you work the other side because you will see the improvement in your gameplay if you work both sides. Let me know down below in the comments what tutorial you wanna see next. If you found this video useful, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and make sure you stop by the live stream. I stream six days a week over on Twitch. Details down below in the description, and I'll see you guys next time.